why hip hop is turning on Lil Wayne. Legend in hip hop and arguably one of the best MCs of all time when he was in his prime. But it's fair to say that the past couple of months have been pretty rough for Wheezy. And well, he's not making things any easier for himself, as his ego and sense of entitlement keeps contrasting with the reality of where he's at now. Because these days, people are really on his neck in a way that you usually don't expect Young to see money. happening to a legend. It's your boy Luesta, and this is why hip hop is churning on Lil Wayne. Generally, Lil Wayne is a man who gets plenty of flowers and with oh, the for sure. For starters, he's responsible for an incredible catalog of music, dominating the mid-2000s with classic projects and mixtapes, which have gained him the respect of his peers and love of fans. Today we recorded that verse. I'm in the studio with Wayne. Wayne was at Hit Factory. He had like the one upstairs, his own little okay, corner. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was, Wayne was, that was his own vibe. Um, fact, they, I'm gonna be honest. It was one time that that was cash money. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, it was. I'm talking about for years. But the thing is that he recorded that verse. I was in the studio. He was smoking like he's smoking now. The only difference is he was rapping, smoking, rapping. And yeah. He did like 30 records in my face. No, no, wrong. He did like 30. <laughs> and 30 records that you hear on the radio right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's not, crazy. Not, 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 records. Not, not just like doing shit to be doing it. Yeah. No, 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 no. Hits no, no, no. back to back. I, so I'm I, like, damn, how do I like get into this? Like, the the way way is this yeah, 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 I'm like, yeah, he gotta yeah, be tired, yeah, or am I playing yeah. myself? He's not lying because we witnessed it ourselves in that era. Yeah, Wayne is literally a machine, bro. Like People everything he was dropping, Wayne really don't understand how that dude was just incredible. Mixtapes and then go commercial and make hit after hit. As for the current generation of rappers, they owe an immense debt to Weezy. Oh, not one only because of million how he percent. And the influence of his music. But even how he reinvented how an artist is supposed to look and carry himself. Look at me like it was. That's honestly an honor for you to say some shit like that. I'm giving that like it is that. So it's just like what what can I say? Like what am I? What, what can I say about that? Like, Joe, just look at me, bro, just look at me and what you say. I learned from Little Wayne. I wanted to be Little Wayne. I would talk when I was younger, girls would say I look like Lil Wayne, so I would run with that. And I would wear the fedoras, and I would wear the tight polo tees with the skinnies, and wear the vans and shit. Back then, I ordered a fake Pearson off of Amazon, and I had <laughs> it right here. And I used to wear it every day like I was Lil Wayne. But while his position as a legend is intact, things aren't exactly going so well right now. And the problem resides with Wayne not being able to see the forest for the trees. I think it's because it's because as as he got older right he he started he, he started to run out of things that he, he can talk about in the way that he wants to like probably still is out here making insane like lyrical bars but then it's like he thinks about it and he probably sits here and says well i've already said it this way that way you know a hundred different ways and he doesn't want to do it and then also adding in that he's like rapping with a bunch of artists that really he shouldn't be like, a lot of the modern artists that he gets with are just, like, not good. Recently, Wayne took the stage at Louisiana Fest, his own special event taking place in his native New Orleans. During his show, Wayne tore through a set of classics before rounding the night off with a major moment when he reunited with Cash Money Legends Hot Boys. More happy than the fans, I believe. You feel me? Yeah. So was it a call no, that's from crazy. Wayne? Like, what brought it all back? Call from Wayne. What was that like? Call from Wayne. It was like, me? You calling me? You feel me? It was like a God answer prayer, you know what I'm saying? You know, just to get that right energy to finally come, you know what I'm saying? Weezy you know he is god but as important as this moment was to the city the whole thing was ultimately overshadowed by two things firstly just how bad his performance was This got him clowned almost universally and for good Wait, enough, I didn't hear I about this. On my TV if I seen this shit at the Super Bowl halftime show. Lil Wayne is one of the greatest rappers of all time and possibly the worst live performer ever. Shaded by Tyler, the creator, who declared that those little humps right before Kill Me, under a post that was making fun of him, this came just days after his feature on Sticky pushed Wheezy to 187 career Hot 100 hits, extending Damn. his record-breaking streak to 21 years. I thought this one was to good. matters though. worse, his performance was eerily close to Orlando Brown's parody of his vocals, especially after he had campaigned hard to land a spot on the Super Bowl halftime show in his hometown. 
And as the footage of that performance went viral, people realized that Wayne's fans should never have been losing their mind over Weezy getting overlooked for the gig. This is the performance y'all were screaming and crying for? Wayne might go, but thank you, Hove. But while that got him clowned online, the real problem was that during this special moment in front of his hometown crowd, he still couldn't accept that the Super Bowl was never his to lose. That moment I said to myself, I wanna be on stage for the Super Bowl one day in front of my mom. And I worked my ass off to get that position. Yeah. It was ripped away from me. In recent times, hip hop has gotten a little fed up with him wallowing over the loss of a dream. How can something that was never offered to you be ripped away from you? The location of the Super Bowl doesn't Bro, that can't that can't make people get upset. This pity party needs to stop immediately. This is so fucking sorry. So why is this bothering people so much? And what can he do to save his legacy? Well, there's a lot of reasons for it. Bro, he doesn't need to save anything, right? Like he's already, he already created a legacy and he's able to pass it on, which he's already been doing, you know? He's passing it on to his children, right? He doesn't need to do anything anymore. That's probably what it is. He, he just doesn't have to, you know, tour. He doesn't have to do live performances. He doesn't have to do anything. But it ultimately boils down to the fact that he was never the right man for the job and his entitlement isn't making it any easier to feel sorry for him. Back when it was initially revealed, Weezy didn't hide the fact that he was pretty much destroyed by the news that Kendrick Lamar would be performing at the Super Bowl halftime show in NOLA rather than him. First of all, I want to say forgive me for, uh, forgive me for the delay. And just the delay, I want to say, uh, I had to first of all, I had to get strength. I had to get strength enough to do this without breaking. Um, I must say thank you. I must say thank you to every voice, every opinion, all the care, all the love and the support out there. Is your your words turn into to arms and, and held me up when, uh -huh. when I try to fall back. That hurt, hurt a lot. You know what I'm talking about, it hurt a whole lot. Um, I blame myself for not being mentally prepared for a letdown, for just automatically mentally putting myself in that position like somebody told me that was literally like crash out on, on a video that. or something but you know i thought that was nothing better than that 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 spot and that stage and that platform in my city so it hurt i hurt a whole lot but even though he was upset it seemed like to begin with he was taking responsibility for getting ahead of himself yeah so like i said it broke me and i'm just trying to put me back together but my god have you all helped is it because it was in his own city that like that's the reason he wanted to do it that would make sense that would make a whole lot of sense thanks to all my peers i didn't watch the super bowl my friends my family just my homies on sports television everybody repping me i really appreciate that i really do i feel like i let all of y'all down by not getting that opportunity but i'm working on me and i'm working thank you it's a weird situation that's only got stranger with his claim that it was snatched from him. And for some, Weezy speaking like that leads to questions about what really happened behind the scenes. Because he's taught, he, he is very entitled or he was promised something. But when I heard that, I, I had actually went backstage because this was after, like he did more uh -huh. songs after the reunion happened. Right. I was like, yo, I need to take a break. Went backstage, we watched it on the monitors. When I heard ripped away from me, I said, oh, Wayne is starting to fire again. But while it's clear that the scars of that experience are still lingering, the fact that he's been so ungracious about it towards someone who loves him really isn't helping his case. In fact, is building animosity who loves him that we aren't used to seeing. Kendrick Lamar is going to be the first rapper to headline the Super Bowl solo and is a gigantic fan of Lil Wayne, who's done nothing but act like an entitled brat instead of congratulating Kendrick who rightfully deserves it. This is a blemish on Wayne's legacy. And while people were oh, happy to please. ride for Weezy initially, that argument has worn thin after performances like what we saw at Louisiana. Yeah, it's more of a rap thing unfortunately and i get it it's, it's in new orleans so people thought you know oh okay so it was I, yeah i don't even no know how people thought, thought that. that yeah i don't know i, I don't even know how people thought that's such a weird that. narrative like yo it's in new orleans so it should go to wayne what? nobody thought, thought that but twitter. it's a f internet twitter rumor that they just ran with and to, to the i'm sorry but like wayne the audacity to say this was ripped from me it was never yours to have you were never in consideration for it 
some guys on Twitter took the opportunity to throw your name out there and be like, would have been cool if Wayne, and then it got enough steam that all of a sudden it should have been yours. Wait, it all started over, over Twitter? Yeah, it was never yours. Instead, the sentiment has changed to have people, including longtime Toonchi fans, feeling like he needs to act more naturally. Weezy needs to grow up. His man is 42 and hating. Still goaded, but damn, he's looking weird. The first time Wayne complained about the Super Bowl was slightly tolerable. Hearing him complain about it again comes across as whining. This is a strange situation for Weezy to be in where even those who identify as Weezy fans are looking at him like this. It wasn't so long ago that Nori claimed Weezy to have the best and most loyal audience of them all. Be honest with y'all, little Wayne might have the best fucking fans in him. Bro? They're polite. They're annoying, but they're polite. No, that, they're okay. in my DM. How you doing, sir? When is this Wayne interview dropping? When is this? I just want to go out on a limb and tell y'all, we the Wayne got the best fans. Not only are they crazy, but they're polite. But okay, okay. Also, uh, based on politeness, okay, I can, I can see it. I can see it. I'm gonna say best fans have to be like Eminem stands, bro. Like those, those have to be like the most loyal. The most loyal people are stands, bro to those fans, they have tolerated a lot, sticking with him all these years, including situations which had directly contributed to Wayne never ever getting that Super Bowl show that he wanted in the first place. Over the years, Wayne's loyal followers have tolerated a lot, because it's not like he's never let his fans down before. At times, he's even behaved in the kind of rash way that Wheezy is now when it comes to his refusal to acknowledge Kendrick's show or even wish him well. Let's start with the infamous onstage walk-offs, which have proven that he's not exactly the guy you want to sing millions of dollars of investment into. Among his brattiest moments were his appearance at the High Times Cup, where he demanded to never be booked for the show again. What happened? What, was he like booed or something? Bro, like, la I remember one time he walked out because, like, something was thrown at him, right? Like, something was thrown at him, so it makes sense to walk out, bro. Don't give people what they pay for if they're just gonna disrespect the person that's, like, going out there doing what they what they do. In another instance, he stormed off- yeah, You gotta show context, right? Like, what happened before? What made him walk out, right? Uh, that's kind of, that's a little unfair. Like, you didn't show why he walked out. It wasn't just because he, you know, he wanted to. He went, he, he didn't do that. Stage after just a half an hour, throwing microphones to the ground. Just last year, there was an incident where he ended a show in LA prematurely, as he felt his Young Money artists such as Alan Cubis and Lil Twist weren't getting the respect they deserve from the crowd. Yo, bro. So he literally shortchanged his fans and left. We appreciate it, but we ain't about to be, we ain't about to be taking over back to the city, folks. We work too hard for this shit. Oh, shit. We work way too hard. This is my motherfucking August Allen. That was Twist, that was Jazz. We are Young Money. We appreciate y'all coming. Appreciate At that time, the hip hop. I mean, it's it, dude. It, that's just like it, he wants. He wants to see uh, see his crew, you know, successful, right? And if he feels like people aren't, you know, giving the energy, I don't know, bro. Like, yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. But I mean, it's kind of it's kind of like he's loyal to his crew, you know. He's willing. He's willing to just drop everything, and if if his if his team's not getting the respect that they deserve, I mean. World wasn't exactly I, bro that's what i'm saying context matters right were they booing him were they booing them were they throwing stuff like bro i need to know with his overly emotional and entitled display i understand wayne's loyalty but you can't make an audience slash crowd cheer or accept a new artist it needs to happen naturally over the years a crowd not giving him the response he feels he's earned simply by being who he is has been a persistent problem in one instance, it even led to him quitting a co-headline tour with Blink-182 at the midway point as he didn't like being an opener. I mean, bro, dude, there's no context again. It's not just because he was an opener, right? Bro, I'm telling you. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. 
Why did Lil Wayne uh stop shows early, bro? Like, there's gotta be something, man. Lack of enthusiasm. I and mean, something was like, you know, an emergency happened, I guess. This one, he was frustrated. Uh, so, he was performing uh, after 30 minutes on stage, claimed, wrote on stage at 9, blah, blah, blah. After performing a few tracks with 2 chains, Wayne brought out a group of signees from his Young Money record, Lil Twist, and someone else. Uh, yeah, we just saw that. Can I show you were late for because the crowd didn't know your artist is insane? Okay, okay. So it was actually, they, they weren't booing him or anything. They were just like, you know, waiting and like getting a feel for him. Okay, that makes more sense. That one, that one's wrong. You can't, you can't just do that. Uh, just for like the crowd looking uninterested. That's, a, that's a little weird, bro. Like you, you can't do that. They're new artists. No one knows who they are. It is what it is. Don't walk out on them, bro. Um, what was what was this one again? Uh, for being an opener. Walked out for being an opener. Um. Walked off stage during opening sets due to feeling little crowd energy, not giving him the respect he felt he deserved as a headliner. But this was this was, had to have been a different time. Uh, right here, uh, walked off stage during Blink One Eighty Two support slots. Uh, says crowd is not my swag. Okay. Uh. Wait, 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 he says, playing to a crowd, a smaller crowd was not for him, and he might drop off the tour entirely. Now that's wild, bruh. Uh, the crowd was too small for him, apparently. I just want the people to know, if you're wondering, please forgive me, but I am so not used to performing to a crowd and there's not too many you know like still phone that's not my swag i'm not sure how long i'm gonna be able to do this tour but make some noise for blink 182 for including me anyway in other instances, medical That's wild. In the way of his ability to perform. He had to cancel yeah, this was an emergency. Las Vegas in 2017 when he had multiple seizures and was found unconscious in his hotel room. This followed a similar incident in 2013 alongside many other scares over the years. While none of his fans would fault him for having a genuine Yeah, like issue, you can't be Wayne's upset over that, bro. Unfortunately, are self-inflicted. For most of his career, Weezy has been wrestling with his love of sipping syrup. And over the years, he's veered from defending it as part of his cultural identity to claiming that he doesn't want to be a bad influence on others. I know I picked up the cup and I started drinking with his promethazine mixed with codeine, which you all know is sir. I started drinking it because I'm from the South, New Orleans. I was young and I watched Michael Jordan in game six and made me want to go right into my driveway and shoot around. Well, I was also young and I listened to Pimp C and they said we was drinking, we drinking that lean. A drug that killed some of the legends uh -huh. he looked up to, including Pimp C. Wayne has been asked time and time again about what it would take for him to kick the cup. Everybody want me to stop and all this and all that, but it ain't that easy, bro. It ain't that easy. Well, everyone knows that's not easy. And at times, he's even publicly declared that he was trying to take this powerful opioid out of his life forever. Do you do that anymore at all? No, I can't. And what made you stop? The doctor did. Really? <laughs> I was doing it too much, and you know, doctor kind of told me, you know, like you know, we can't tell you what to do, but I suggest that your mom tell you to stop. But his adventures with the yeah. purple drink are well known. So too is the extent that he consumes it. In fact, he has so much of it around him that he almost killed currency by accident. He pulled up the whole six thing and then put them back in the rings, so they looked like harmless purple Hawaiian punches in the fridge. Mm. So I ran in basketball thirsty. And no way, bro. 
bitch is like standing in the hallway of the bus, just killing it. Yeah. And he came on the bus and was like, oh, Lord. Because he know I don't fuck with you. Like, spill him. You probably about to die. Ugh. An addiction that's threatened his life time and time again. Weezy Bro? even spoke about the pains of withdrawals on the fame track, I Feel Like Dying. He literally said the following lyrics. I'm at the top of the top, but still I climb. And if I should ever fall, the ground would then turn to wine. Pop, pop, pop. I feel like flying. Then I feel like frying. Then I feel like dying. And while it's unclear how much he still consumes it, Wayne very much still seems to I be thought... intoxicated in public on a regular basis. Whether that's via weed. That's that's from the the consistent use as like growing up and what other that's that's been like his da his brain is is damaged, bro. From from the use of drugs all the way leading up from from you know a young age all the way to however old he is now, like in his forties or fifties, right? That's just that's just what it's from. So I mean, he might he might appear to do it, but like if you test him, he could come back clean and he'd still act the same way as if he was on lean. Drink or drank is unclear, but it still seems like sobriety still isn't a way that you'll often find him. And when he got arrested after a private jet search in late December 2019, the cops found not only a gold-plated handgun, but a whole array of drugs including suspected cocaine ecstasy, marijuana, heroin, painkillers, and prescription strength cough syrup. At 42 years of age, Weezy's fans want to see him begin to look after himself a little better. Yeah. And from the outside looking in, it's his continued celebration of this kind of lifestyle that made him ineligible for the Super Bowl. Wayne spent 90% of his career promoting liquid dope and raised a generation of junkies. And y'all think the NFL okay. is about to bring him on? Because Bro. when you examine Wayne's legacy, it's impossible. I listened to Wayne growing up, right? I didn't go out wanna, wanting to like see sip syrup and and do all these drugs bro i smoked pot like four times in my life dude maybe three actually three times in my life bro like i i grew up listening i know it's just me right but i grew up listening to hip-hop from from like the youngest age possible that you can understand music right all the way through it it never made me want to go do drugs I mean, I don't know. It's possible to gloss over all the good he's done from a musical standpoint, but it's fair to say that he also contributed to a culture that has negatively impacted hip hop too, even claiming some of its best, brightest, and youngest. You have those people that take it to the extreme. Like for the example, uh, I think Wayne has said after a while, he wasn't even pouring codeine with pop. He was drinking it straight out the bottle. While Weezy has been able to survive with his life intact, there's no denying that drug abuse has had a massive impact on him both physically and mentally. Oh, 100%. another level of frustration for hip hop and that it stops him from being as great as he truly could be. Not to mention that it has ruined his memory to the extent that he can't remember his own lyrics. Yes, I've seen this, I've seen this. tie to where he was at when he made his classic projects. I don't know, the Carter 3, the Carter 2, the Carter 1 from the Carter 4, he admitted. And that's just my God honest truth. You could lie, you could ask me about such and such song, I wouldn't even know what we talking about. Because of this, the music doesn't hold any significance to him in the same way as it does for others. Right. So, lyrics that his fans cherish can be presented to him as if he'd never heard them before. This might be my favorite Wayne line of all time, Parker. Yeah, bro, this, this was crazy, bro. It's sad. Better wear a latex, because you don't want that latex, and I think I'm latex. Oh, oh, oh. I oh Yeah. In fact, this isn't just a problem in a live setting because now it's drugs, man. Of his Don't do drugs. Too. I literally, bro, when I'm doing some of my shit, you can, if you go through my phone history, when my Google history is going, and you press L. First thing gonna come up is Lil Wayne lyrics. I literally have to Google my lyrics to make sure I didn't say certain oh stuff. Oh my god! Before. Yo, I swear to God, I do that too. Man, that's how long we've been doing this. Shit. Yeah, I just did that shit last night. That's why I just told you. That's why I say, as soon as you go to my Google history, my Safari is gonna be Lil Wayne lyrics. Now, right. Wayne has taken drastic measures and uses a teleprompter to help him with the words. Essentially, meaning that this legendary rapper is now doing karaoke to his new tracks. Understandably, fans are able to understand the limitations of where he can perform today. I love Wayne, and I will never take credit away from him as a genius. But I can understand why they didn't have him perform. He oh, never yeah. his lines, and his performances are trash. Beyond those lingering issues, 
there is the simple fact that Wayne doesn't handle his brand well. For starters, his recent catalog has been far from spectacular. I haven't dropped anything that's that crazy. The anticipation for Carter Five was that we would been we had been anticipating it for how many years? I don't know. It was a long time coming. But beyond that, it hasn't been anything crazy. So when I think about it like this, I'm like, even project-wise, outside of your performances, it's not really given that much for somebody to hold on to for you to even perform at the Super Bowl. Why would they ask you? And at times, he does and says things that you would never expect a top tier rapper to engage in, including performing at weddings for a bag where he should be selling out arenas. But at the minute, is that- I mean, you, you can't, you can't like hate on him for that, right? Like, he just wants to perform, man. He wants to do his job. What's I do what he loves to do, you know? I I still agree that he needs to get clean if he's not clean. But he's just doing what he wants to do, right? He's having, which came about around the time of him not getting the Super Bowl placement, which is really hurting his reputation. Because now, fans are wondering if it was him who was responsible for the notoriously bad attitudes of some of his Young Money signees, too. Before I show you that clip, I gotta tell you guys about today's video sponsor, Manscaped. With the holiday season here, cuffing season, family dinners, all that, you don't wanna show up looking like you just crawled out of a cave. Well, that's where the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra from Manscaped comes in. Picture this, the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra. This thing is yeah, smooth, yeah. reliable, and it keeps you fresh whether you're prepping for a date night or just trying to make a good impression around the family. And let's not forget the Weed Whacker 2.0, handling any of those stray nose and ear hairs that love to show up unannounced. Plus, they've got you covered post-shave with the Crop Soother and the Crop Preserver. And you even got some holiday freebies. Their Boxers 2.0 and also okay, the Shirt okay, 2.0 okay. travel bag. If you're interested in all of this, now what does it do your balls, bro? Manscaped.com and use code LOOT20 to get 20% off plus free shipping. That's code oh. LOOT20 for 20% off and free shipping. Trust me. I have know. never heard a more like normal Manscaped ad, bro. I have never heard a normal Manscaped ad. It's always been about like how how well it trims up uh, around your ball sack, bro. Like always balls dude this is this one's normal bro i'm pretty sure manscape allows you to get freaky with it dude this is the real mvp of holiday grooming go check it out now but now let's get back into the video although he feels like he's <laughs> lost weird. a chance that he felt was rightfully his louisiana fest proved that new orleans is still rocking with him to the fullest and even with all the evidence to the contrary they're the ones who really still want to see him on that halftime show stage i just felt that they should have said okay we're gonna let you guys share it because wayne have influenced right. the next generation of rap like the, a lot of these young people this is how serious it is with wayne a lot of these young rappers a lot of these young people still know who wayne is whereas one time i was talking about when BG she first got out it was a little female she was like 25 years old and she was like who's bg i said you never heard of bling bling she said no she said my mom didn't mind to listen to that you know what i'm saying so <laughs> I mean, it's true. Show, yeah. yeah you know what i'm saying so it go to show you like so many people didn't know who bg was but they know who wayne is because wayne constantly kept music staying with the time yeah cool. yeah but when you really look at everything wayne has accomplished it seems like he's focusing on the wrong things by getting so hung up on the super bowl scenario just look at Louisiana Fest. That same night that he claimed the Super Bowl was taken from him, he got the key to the city and was informed that he would receive the first star on the New Orleans Walk of Fame on Canal Street. Yeah, that is insane. That is insane, dude. Yo, bro. And there's no denying that he deserves that, as he oh, has always one million gone percent, for his city dude. to the fullest. All New Orleans music inspires me. What influenced us was the early New Orleans artists before us. We all just following that fabric, that tradition, that culture now, and it's easy to follow it when it's natural. The only issue is that at this stage in his career, Lil Wayne needs to focus more on what he's achieved rather than let what hasn't manage to the. Bro, no, no. Just think about what you can achieve, bro. Like that—that's—that's that's how you improve, man. 
you set a goal and you want to meet that goal. Him, him sitting here saying that he wants to be on the Super Bowl and whatnot, dude, he, he's setting a goal. And he wants that goal to come and, and become a reality, bro. You, you don't sit here and dwell on the past or anything like that, bro. That That's garbage. That's garbage. Think about what you can do in the future, you know? Think about think about what like not about not about the things that you you know don't have or whatever. Don't think about the things that you don't have. Make aspir uh, aspirations for what you can achieve in life, right? Always be planning for stuff that you can achieve, man. If he if he got sober and all that, and and you know he he wasn't entitled. Okay, some of this stuff does make him look entitled, like a little bratty kid, but. Like, you, you remove the ego, set the ego aside, you, you humble up a little bit. Dude, think about all the things you could achieve. You're Lil Wayne. You're Lil Wayne, bro. Define him. And there are times where he's shown that he's capable of this. During yeah. his speech after he won the Global Impact Award last year, Wayne spoke openly about the sacrifices that were made and everything he's achieved against the odds. You know, like, where I'm from, New Orleans, where I'm from, you, you're not supposed to be here. Where I'm from, I walked into my mama room when I was 14. She asked me for a key because my dad was killed and her son had just blew up and went on his first tour and we did not know it was gonna be six months. When Wayne is able to really reflect, he seems to know what he's achieved and not only that, is aware that he's more relevant than most rappers in his age bracket ever yeah. have been. Obviously, being in the game for so long, like, what is your why? Honestly, man, it's literally just waking up, waking up and getting a chance to do it again, and also being being validated and being still wanted, and people wanting to hear me, wanting to listen to me. Yeah, that right there is the that's the exact answer. That's nothing that's no, that's called for this. passion, bro. That is simply waking up, getting the chance to. Be great and try my hardest to just be 1% better than I was yesterday. In the past few months, that doesn't always seem to be enough for him when it really should. But this is where the very thing that makes him who he is becomes a problem. Throughout his career, Weezy has never wanted to be second best or play second fiddle to anyone. So it's this drive and love of artistry that keeps him there to this day. It's yep. hard not to keep being creative. If you are a creative person, right. it's just gonna be, it's, it's, it's up to you to want to put the creation together true like I said, until i don't have that energy to one of them words that keep popping up in my mind when i'm i can't watch tv without words and analogies and i trust me trust me and when that stop happening until i'm ready if i don't call mac and if i don't call lucy shout out lucy that's my assistant if i don't hear lucy and say studio 2 a.m you know what I mean? If I don't hit and say Studio 1 a.m. Don't get it twisted. Nothing here has been said out of hate for Lil Wayne. Oh, now, of course not. You game, can't hate him, bro. Lil you has can't. done it all and said it all. His career is a benchmark for what you can achieve through hard work and always trying to improve your craft. However, what all of hip-hop is saying right now is that rather than keep hanging on to the one thing that isn't in his grasp, he should focus yeah, on preserving about the and future, expanding man. on the legacy he does have. Because after all this time, it'd be a damn shame for it to be obscured by his behavior in the later stages of his time on the mic. Now, if you want to learn about why Kendrick was picked over Wheezy for the Super Bowl, you can click the video on the screen. Till next time, my friends. Yo, W video, man. W. You know, obviously, roses to Lil Wayne, dude. It, like, doing things that... You know, not a lot of people can do, of course. Uh, yeah, get sober, lower the ego a bit. I mean, bro, you gotta remember, uh, your crowd is not, they're not stepping stones, bro. Like, the people that support you and whatnot, they're not stepping stones. And always remember to not think about what you, what you don't have or what you didn't get, but what you could get and what you could achieve, you know. You, you have the passion. You have the creativity. You just have to you just have to move on past what you couldn't get at that time because there's still it's always going to be possible in the future for him to like have that have that seat up uh, like have that stage and whatnot. So you just can't dwell on the past, bro. You have to like think about what you can change in in the present to make it to where in the future you can achieve your goal.